Hey everybody, so as you know, we are working on the scripts for the next few country episodes, which means this is gonna have to be a filler week. Today's episode is gonna be one that was requested, the countries of South America explained. Okay, we're not gonna talk about political issues in this episode because although government does play kind of like a big role in their portrayal to the world stage, governments tend to fluctuate and they don't necessarily stand for all the stuff you need to know about a country. And as usual, when I make videos like this, I like to have natives in the video with me to help out. So without further ado, you remember Remember them? The two people from the Colombia and Ecuador episode, Cindy and Diego. Hey! How you doing? Hello. Right. Está mi gente? Woo. Are you guys ready to make your countries proud? Yeah. Yes, we are. Of are you Are you ready to critique the other countries and possibly get criticized? Uh, Looking forward to it. Yeah. <laughs> First country, Argentina. Now, uh, a lot of Latin American countries have their opinions on Argentina. I heard a joke from an Argentinian once. They said all the Latin American countries hate Argentina because Argentinians think they're better than everybody. But then Argentina responds by saying, well, we are, so what's your point? No, but in all seriousness, Argentinians are really cool, nice, sweet people. Just, uh, they're kind of, uh, they're very proud of their country. Argentinians tend to be way more connected to their European roots as opposed to the other countries. Over half the population is either Italian or has roots from Italy. You're also more likely to see blonde hair, blue eyed people. Of course, they are known for their passionate tango steps, mate, and uh, yeah, really cool people. Just, uh, be careful about talking about this. All right, Cindy Diego, what do you got to say about Argentina? They have the best barbecue, like, ever. They do, and absolutely. The city is beautiful. Yeah, the architecture been. in the cities is just amazing. Okay, so Diego, can you do an Argentinian accent? I'll try. Hey guys, don't judge me. Please, I'll try my best. Y ya, ya me quiero regresar a la Argentina. Y lo saben, nene. There's a lot of sh, sh sounds. Bolivia. Now this is a unique one. I've actually been here. Bolivia is kind of known for being like the indigenous one. They have the highest percentage of their population being Amerindian in descent, mostly being Aymara or Quechua. They're kind of like the mysterious mountain cousins that dress differently at family reunions. Many of the women still wear the traditional dresses and the bowler hats and wrestle. Seriously, you gotta see Cholita wrestling if you ever go to La Paz. It's like the coolest thing ever. Speaking of which, La Paz is disputably the highest capital city in the world. If you go there, you're gonna like run out of breath because the altitude is so high. Keep in mind though, Bolivia also has parts of the Amazon rainforest and they also have a desert in the Atacama. If you go to the rainforest though, you can pass through the Yungas Road, the world's most dangerous road. Sometimes it's only three meters wide. You could die. It's so fun. They're kind of known for having a government that's like really kind of anti-outside influence. You know, all the McDonald's were banned there, although they do have KFC and Subway and Starbucks. Oh, and because it is the lowest GDP per capita country in all of South America, the exchange rate is amazing. Not even joking, you can buy like a whole meal for 80 cents. I bought an entire like army sack of souvenirs for like 20 people. I ended up spending only like $80. Anyway, Bolivia, cool place, check it out. All right guys, uh, what do you think about Bolivia? Titicaca? Uh, yeah, and uh... Sorry guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the Bolivian people I've met, they're pretty cool. They're so down to earth. Brazil! I feel like I don't even really have to say too much about this, but you guys all know Brazil. It's the big guy. It's the largest country, the largest population, the largest economy in all of South America. South America could not function without Brazil. Now, there's really no one way to summarize all of Brazil because all of the regions and states are so completely different, so many different types of people. But overall, it's kind of like the dad of South America. Like, it plays such a key figure role and it speaks Portuguese. Brazilian geography Nadia says Spanish is like a choppier version of Portuguese but without the sh, j, and uh sounds. The country is super diverse. You have white, black, Asian. They have the highest Japanese population outside of Japan. And it's interesting though because it doesn't matter who you are, like at the core of their hearts, they're Brazilian first. I mean, Brazilians, they know how to get down to it and work really hard if they have to. But I mean, when you're surrounded by so much natural beauty, it's really hard not to relinquish the samba from your soul. And that's kind of Brazil, you know? Brazil, what comes to mind? Brazil. Da -da 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 -da. I love their people. They're super cool. Like you just want to party with them. What do you how much Portuguese can you guys understand when they speak it? I mean, I would say I would get like 20%, 30%. 20, even 30. 40. Maybe even 40. Yeah. I feel like it's it's like a, a Spanish with an accent. Yeah, yeah it depends. 
Annals of the Pins the Region. Because for Delis, it mm -hmm. has a heavier accent. Sao Paulo, not so much. <laughs> oh. I gotta look this up. Chile. This one's interesting because geographically speaking, they are pretty isolated from the rest of the continent. It's like the only country in the world where you cannot do a horizontal landscape layout of the nation's image. Chileans are kind of like the bougie, stoic, Ralph Waldo Emerson writers who drink wine. They have like the best wine in the entire continent. It's been known that they are probably the fastest talkers in all of South America and they have a weird accent. They have a ton of weird words. Some of you guys have said that you can understand Portuguese better than you can understand Chileans. That's how thick their accent is. And it's interesting because they're kind of like the only country that really has to deal with intense earthquakes. They are right on the Pacific Rim and they get a lot of penguins. But overall, yeah, it's like they're kind of like the slightly rich uncle with a pipe in his hand, but you just can't understand what he's saying. Chile, what comes to mind? Pololos. <laughs> And they're famous for their festival, that they have a Viña del Mar. Viña. Yeah. Viña del Mar. It's really nice. Diego, can you do a Chilean accent? <laughs> Sorry guys, that's the, that sounds so stereotypical. My bad. Is there such a thing as pololear in Chile? I don't know. Like to make a boyfriend or girlfriend? Like a verb? Any comments? Maybe. Let, let us know. And now, Colombia. Diego's time to shine. Cindy, you're gonna have to sit this one out for a little bit. All right. South America was a family. How would Colombia fit into it? They said we're the troublemakers, but let me be clear. Party-wise, yes, we are the troublemakers party-wise. Party. -wise. party. Uh, yep. First of all, um, we're a country that, you know, we don't give up, like, against, uh, or, like, with adversity, like, facing adversity. You, you had a lot been, of yeah, it. We've <laughs> yeah, been in, we've, been, we've gone through a lot. It's interesting. You guys are kind of, like, the twin of Venezuela right you're, you're like very similar right yeah it's funny because we like we have this like love and hate relationship yeah in the 80s and 90s Colombians were going to Venezuela like, yeah they were running away and going to now it's the opposite Venezuelans are coming into Colombia yeah. you're right there is like a unity between mm -hmm. you guys yeah. for, no matter yeah. what happens exactly you're always gonna be there for each other and Colombia has taken the most Venezuelans out of any other country in the world yeah I've heard it's like you know it, it surpassed like uh, the million I mean there's a lot of great food great music beautiful girls beautiful Beautiful women. <laughs> and by the way, guys, we have the original arepas, so, you know, it's all good. Venezuelans are gonna argue about that. But yeah, so many musicians and artists, right? Yeah, for example, Jay Balvin, you know, he's been killing it. Uh, you know, Shakira, Juan is... Uh, Everybody knows Shakira. And the list goes on and on. I mean, I don't know if it's weird to you guys, but like, we love to dip like cheese, queso cuajado or queso campesino, like into hot chocolate and it melts and it's the best thing. Every. All right, well, uh, Cindy, uh, what is an Ecuadorian's perspective on Colombian? Yeah, the chocolate actually was pretty good. Uh, <laughs> I can I can say that I really liked it. And they're pretty cool people. I mean, don't oh, you thanks. see this? Appreciate I mean, it. it's like, yeah, they're pretty awesome. And it's interesting to note that also these countries, as well as Venezuela and Panama, were one country at one point, yes. Gran Colombia. Mm -hmm. So you're going to see a lot of similarities and, you know, cultural traits that kind of tie in with each other within all four of those countries. Yep. Maybe less Panama, though, because they're kind of a little separated. Oh. But yeah. Colombia, Venezuela, Ecuador, I call it the Ecove Alliance. Alliance. <laughs> <laughs> and now Ecuador, which means Diego, you gotta get out of here. So, yep. Yeah, All right, Cindy, if South America was like a family, uh, how would uh, Ecuador play into the mix? I don't know. Um, Ecuador is very chill. We're very nerdy. We do love education. Like, all our schools are bilingual. Like, everything is focused in education. We are a very friendly country. We don't like to fight. Very agricultural. Kind of like the uh, uh, sidekick best. Friend. I will say totally that. Yeah. Yes. The second language was official. Um, the Quechua language was in 2010, if I'm not wrong. They made it official. They made it official in our country. But yeah, and now a lot of schools are actually teaching Quechua. And the um, Darwin Center is actually in the Galapagos. So it's a lot of research, it's a lot of, uh, you know. A lot of science stuff. A lot of science stuff. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Cuenca is a very uh, colonial place. It has become like the number one retirement place in South. America. Well, uh, Diego, uh, from a Colombian perspective, what do you guys think of Ecuadorians? I think they're pretty chill, like, you know, like, we never had a problem with them. Yeah. No, they're they're kind of like the nerdy brother, you know, who like never messes, you know, with you, so. Alright guys, uh, what do you think about the Guyanas and Guyana and Suriname?
Basically, these three are like the quiet kids down the hall at school that you didn't even know went to your school, and like you meet them for the first time at graduation. Now for Guyana, Suriname, and French Guiana, I'm just gonna kind of do them all at once because these three just kind of generally go together. Guyana speaks English, Suriname speaks Dutch, although English is very prevalent there as well, and French speaking French Guiana is an overseas region of France, which is why some people kind of use it as like a backdoor entrance into the EU. Otherwise, yeah, Guyana and Suriname are also very similar. They're the only two countries in South America that drive on the left side of the road. They both have huge Indian populations, people that are descended from the indentured servants that were brought over during colonial times. This in return makes them some of the countries with the highest Hindu populations per capita. You can see Hindu shrines and Hindu temples all over. Basically in a nutshell, it's kind of like a place where a ton of different people from all over the world were dumped into one spot and had to kind of figure out what to do. These three areas generally identify as Caribbean in their culture and identity rather than South American. I talked to my French friend William who was born here. Certains d'entre vous uh, uh, Peut-être le connaître, le youtuber Doc7. Yeah, we're buddies. He was actually supposed to be in my France episode, but you know, life stuff happened and he couldn't make it. But yeah, we still keep in contact. Anyway, Doc7 wanted me to tell you. French Guiana was started out as a prison colony where some of the worst criminals in France were sent, similar to what the British did to Australia. It's super diverse. They have whites, blacks, Creoles, native Indian tribes. Surprisingly, a lot of Hmong people that were brought over after Laos had a big war. They're famous for their space center, La Chute Voltaire. He actually made quite a few videos explaining Explaining about this place. Most of his videos are in French, but some of them do have English subtitles though, so if you don't understand French, just uh, turn on the subtitles. Paraguay. Paraguay is kind of like the middle black sheep daughter that doesn't get a lot of attention. Paraguay has two official languages, Spanish and the indigenous Guarani language. And it's interesting because more people actually understand Guarani than Spanish here. If you go outside of the cities into like rural areas, you might even have trouble communicating because the people just don't speak Spanish. Uh, culturally, they are kind of like more rural and rustic. They're known for being good horse riders. They love drinking terere. They love playing that bouncy galopas and guarina country music. And finally, the women are famous for doing the Danza de la Botella, or the bottle dance. It looks really cool, like they balance bottles or jars on their head, and sometimes they stack them up like 10 high. Pretty cool, very underrated. I say go visit. All right guys, uh, so what comes to mind when you think of Paraguay? If I'm not mistaken, they're pretty good with like, or playing harp. Harps? Yeah. Nice. I don't know, maybe. What's what, what kind of comes to mind when you like meet or like see Paraguayan people on TV or what do you think? Or have you guys been all this time? <laughs> I know, it's like the lost yeah, unicorn. It's a mystery. Peru. Peru is kind of like the big brother who took a risk, played his cards right in business and marketing and exploited the crap out of all his tourism spots and made a lot of money. It worked. He's kind of like a big shot now. Keep in mind, Peru is also one of the indigenous strong nations. A significant portion of their population is Amerindian in descent. The largest one being Quechua. They are known for having really good food. Everybody knows ceviche. All right guys, Peru, what comes to mind? Particularly Ecuadorian and Peruvian food is very, very similar. Even like the papas that they have, okay. is really? like we have it, mm. it is very similar. To okay, uh, Diego introduced me to this wonderful, amazing thing from Peru. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> guys, please don't don't hate me, okay? But I had to... I love it! <laughs> Alright? You know what it is already? Señorita Laura. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Senorita Laura is like the Jerry Springer of Peru. People go on this show and they go crazy and they yell at each other and they accuse who of cheating who. And then some of them get a prize and apparently this lady got a hot dog stand as a prize when she was cheated on. I, I don't get it, but I love it. I love it. I love it so much. Uruguay. The joke is Uruguay is like Argentina's Canada. Most South Americans say that they can't distinguish the difference between Argentinians and Uruguayans, but Argentinians and Uruguayans can totally tell the difference and they swear by it. They have like generally the same accent and the same general kind of like Eurocentric type of demographic. I mean Uruguay doesn't really have a native indigenous population. The ones that were there were kind of either moved or displaced or killed off. So now it's mostly just Spanish and Italian. Out of all the countries in Latin America they have the lowest percentage of church attendance and highest unaffiliated population at somewhere around 17%. Landscape wise Geography Adrian says it might be boring. We don't have mountains, deserts, jungles, or snow. We are just a flat plain with lots of happy cows and sheep that eat as much grass as they can. Now of course you cannot talk about Uruguay without mentioning soccer, football. Now here's the thing, like all Latin American countries pretty much love soccer, football, but Uruguay, it's like, it's impressive how well they've done for such a small country. Nonetheless, they have won two World Cups and 15 Copa America wins. They beat Argentina, a country that's like 15 times their population. So they take this sport really seriously. Uruguay, what do you guys think? What comes to mind? Soccer. Again. Oh, 
<laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever met a uh, Uruguayan, but I mean, they're cool. I mean, you know, I'll be cool with them, obviously. They have, like, they have like a very famous lake also. Lake? Lake. Yeah, because hmm. everybody that goes to Argentina, they always want to take like the the, oh, yeah, the true. boot, right? Yeah, yeah, I've heard that. And finally, Venezuela. Hey guys, so just a heads up, while we were filming this video, all those crazy things that were happening in Venezuela literally just occurred. So we're going to do a little video explaining about all that stuff later, but until then, let's get back to the main video. Geography Maria Fernanda says, if Venezuela was a student, she would be like a straight A student that got addicted to Adderall and is in and out of rehab. <laughs> okay, okay, jokes aside. Venezuela is actually very unique. Just like their neighbors, they have almost every single landscape you can imagine. They have deserts, they have beaches, they have jungles, they have snow-capped mountains. Now, I know we're not gonna talk too much about politics, but I think it's very interesting to note the relationship they have with Bolivia. Their governments kind of have similar ideologies with like minimizing outside influence influence. There's like a unique Bolivia, Venezuela, Cuba alliance. There's like all these little hidden gems in Venezuela. You know, Angel Falls is here. It's uh, the thing that inspired the movie up. They have like a river slash lake where it has like perpetual lightning all year round. And yeah, Venezuelans though, they are super proud of their country. And Venezuelans do have a lot of European background. It's been said that Venezuelans have like the cleanest Spanish. It's like very pure and untainted. I don't know. That's what I was told. They're very similar to Colombians, very, uh, very outgoing and party people if they want to be. Apart from all the political stuff, we all know it, but when you just meet a, a Venezuelan, what do you think? The brothers. The brothers. The twins, the twins. of you guys. Arepas. Uh -huh. Arepas. You know you said Arepas. No, you know, you, you know the truth, you know. Well, by the way, yeah, they do have a little bit of an accent. Diego, can you do the accent? Well, I can try. Come on, Marico. Como esta la vaina, chao. Todo fino. Nailed it. Oh, okay. And by the way, arepas, Colombians. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that was it. Thank you guys for being in this uh, video. For inviting us. Yes, for Thanks sure. Thanks for inviting us. Uh, any last words you guys want to just say to the whole uh, Geography Now community? You know, you, even though you know we have a lot of differences, you know we share a lot of similarities as well. And you will find like really good people, really good food. Like landscapes are some of the best ones you can ever find. Yeah, I've had America. the opportunity to to travel. It's just the nature is like the colors are so vibrant. Mm -hmm. I feel like the Andes, the minerals that we have is everything is just so organic and anything is like processed. Maybe that's the reason why the food is also so good. You don't have to fight for and organic. And you don't have you to, don't to fight for organic. organic. Yeah. Everything is organic. So cheap too, right? Exactly. Yeah. Every country has its beauty and you should visit them all, I would yes. say. <laughs> Specifically, which one should they visit? Colombia. <laughs> you know, Cartagena, man. You know, <laughs> well, thank you so much. That's it. Hope you guys have a good one. Stay Bye. Stay Take tuned. care, guys. Bye.